Will the all-new Hyundai Ioniq 6 be as good as the Hyundai Ioniq 5? The Hyundai Ioniq 5 is a very well-rounded EV. It has a ridiculously fast charger on board, it drives very well, and it has a unique design. Now, Hyundai has built a different take on the very popular EV, and it has already won a bunch of awards. And recently, I got invited by Hyundai to check out what all the fuss is about and take it out for a test drive. So for this one, I'll share with you my thoughts on the design, the interior, the tech, the EV performance, and the driving experience so that you have a better idea before you buy. The Ionic 6 is the third battery electric vehicle from Hyundai. It'll slot right next to the Ionic 5 and the Hyundai Kona EV, both of which I've fully tested before, so make sure to check out the links to see the videos. The Ionic 6 will be very similar to the Ionic 5. They share the same eGMP platform, so they'll have the same battery packs, the same options of single motor rear wheel drive or dual motor all wheel drive powertrains, and they have very similar feeling interiors. The exterior design between the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6 is where the two are very different. The Ionic 5 is more of a low res hatchback, while the Ionic 6 is like a modern take on a car from the 1930s. The design is streamlined, almost symmetrical between the front and the rear. So you might get some Porsche 911, maybe Volkswagen Beetle vibes. For this one, the engineers focus on having a very low coefficient of drag. The lower the number, the easier it is for the car to cut through the air, and therefore, the farther it could travel on its charge. The Ionic 6 managed to get a drag coefficient of 0.22 with the smaller 18-inch wheels. The boxier Ionic 5 has a drag coefficient of 0.28. To achieve this, the front end of the Ionic 6 has these air curtains that will redirect the incoming airflow so it stays glued to the side of the car. Meanwhile, the door handles will sit flush when the car is in motion, and then there are these little protrusions on the rear end of the car called flow separation traps that will trap the air, and then when you add the double spoiler design, those things add to the effect of reducing pressure drag between the front and the rear ends of the car. And just like the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6 has these active air flaps so you can manage the temperatures of the batteries. Also like the Ionic 5, there's a lot of pixel-like elements throughout the car. The headlights, the front radar sensor, side view mirrors, tail lights, and the spoiler mounted lights all follow that pixel design motif. Inside, the Ionic 6 is almost like the Ionic 5, but with some stuff reconfigured or repositioned. It has the same climate controls, the same dual screen layout, and the same style shifter that's mounted on the steering column. The steering wheel has a similar design with the paddle shifters that can change the regen braking, there's the same drive mode dial, and with slightly different buttons. And the four dots, which is Morse code for the letter H, is still there, but this time it will light up with different colors when you change your driving mode. As for the dash, it is different. The Ionic 6 has a continuous trim spanning the width of the car where it curves upwards at the end. Apparently this was designed after an airplane's wingtips. The US market version will come with conventional side view mirrors, but if it had cameras for the side view mirrors, this is where the camera's display would be located. When it comes to the transmission tunnel of the Ionic 6, this is now a bridge type or floating center console, whereas the Ionic 5 had a quirky movable section. With this bridge type center console design, the controls for the windows and the door locks have been moved from the door to this spot. So now the door is almost a featureless panel, except for the big speaker grill, a big grab handle, and the door latch. As for the second row, the rear legroom is a hair shorter compared to the Ionic 5 at 39.2 inches. The air vents have been relocated from the B pillar on the Ionic 5 to the center console here on the Ionic 6. And when it comes to cargo space, the Ionic 6 doesn't have as big of a trunk at 11.2 cubic feet, but you can fold the rear seats down in a 60-40 split by using the pull tabs in the trunk and then lowering it down manually. Now, if you're into the use of sustainable materials, the Ionic 6 is all about that. The dash and the pillars are made of sugarcane derived materials. The door cards are made of a mixture of canola flour and corn extracts. The seats are made of recycled bottles. And then the floor mats are made of recycled fishing nets. And just like the Ionic 5, there will be a generous amount of ambient lighting in the Ionic 6. 
Now when it comes to the tech, the Ionic 6 uses the same dual 12.3 inch screens. This is running on the same software as the Ionic 5, which is also going to be very similar as the one in the EV6 and also the GV60. All of these cars are running on the same eGMP platform. And if you want to see those reviews, again, check the links in the description box or up in the corner. This Ionic 6 will have built-in navigation, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and it'll be able to update the software over the air. This Ionic 6 also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it will only be done via a wired connection. If you go for the limited model, there's a 360 degree camera system that Hyundai calls Surround View Monitor. And just like the other Hyundai cars, when you use your turn signals, the camera feed will be fed into your digital cluster. So for example, when you use your right blinker, you'll be able to see the view from the right camera on the right gauge. And if you get the Limited or the SEL model, they will come with a wireless charger. So that's located on the center console. But if you want to charge traditionally, there are several USB-C charge ports and a traditional one right next to the wireless charger. As for the power and the EV performance, again, the Ionic 6 is going to be almost the same as the Ionic 5 as it resides on the same platform. There's going to be three different flavors for the Ionic 6. There's a standard range model that's rated up to 240 miles. That's going to be a single electric motor driving the rear wheels and it makes 149 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Then there's going to be a long-range rear-wheel drive model with 225 horsepower and that will have a maximum range of 361 miles when it's on the SE model with the more aerodynamic 18-inch wheels. And finally, there's the long-range all-wheel drive model and the two electric motors will make a net 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque, capable of going 0 to 60 in the low 5 second range. As for the range, the all-wheel drive model will be able to do up to 316 miles. Now there are several engineering changes within the high voltage battery system and the motors for the purpose of improving energy density and improving general range. But the one noteworthy upgrade here is the front motor disconnect system. So with the all-wheel drive model, when you're in eco mode, there's a dog clutch that will disconnect the front traction motor from the front axle. So you don't have parasitic loss of the rotor. So essentially this becomes a rear wheel drive model. And apparently disconnecting the motor is better from a range perspective because it adds about 6% of range for the all-wheel drive model. Now, when it comes to charging the Ionic 6, this will be able to take advantage of the faster 350 kilowatt chargers out there. The charger in the Ionic 6 is capped to 235 kilowatts, and the charging time target is similar to the Ionic 5, where they're hoping for 18 minutes to get from 10% to 80% state of charge in ideal conditions. Now, if you have a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger, which is typically what you'll run across, 10% to 80% may take an estimated 25 minutes. And with a level two charger to go from 10% to full, this will take a little more than seven hours. As for the vehicle to load feature, the Ionic 6 will have that as well. And that's going to allow you to power up appliances that can normally connect to a 110 volt source. As for the driving experience, the Ionic 6 feels very much like the Ionic 5. It has very similar road manners. The ride quality is excellent and very quiet. There's very little harshness and vibration because there's no mechanical engine and the slippery exterior and the glass managed to cut out a lot of the outside noise. It can be so quiet inside that the engineers decided to add in customizable noise levels and that can range from completely off to 100% like a spaceship when you're on the accelerator. In the handling department, the Ionic 6 is nimble. Just like all EVs, most of the weight of the Ionic 6 is right beneath you. So this car feels very stable around corners and doesn't sway like big SUVs. And with both axles being driven in this all wheel drive model, the Ionic 6 has plenty of grip. When it comes to regen braking, you can do one pedal driving in this car if you want. There's four levels of regen that you can choose from. There's also a radar based regen braking method, which will adjust depending on the car in front of you and the relative speed. So all things considered, the Ionic 6 is going to be a great alternative to the Ionic 5 and vice versa. 
The Ionic 5 is already one of the best EVs you can buy right now. And the Ionic 6 replicates that formula with a major design twist on the outside. Pricing wise, the Ionic 6 will start at $41,600 with the SE standard range model and that price goes all the way to $56,100 for the limited all-wheel drive dual motor. All of this is of course before delivery charges. So I want to hear your thoughts on the Ionic 6 so leave your comments down below. I've reviewed a bunch of EVs on this channel so if you don't mind checking out this video over here, I'd greatly appreciate that. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified on my next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.